Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Removal Sanity and today I'm reviewing Park Beyond on the Series X, developed by Limbic Entertainment and published by Bandai Namco. So what is Park Beyond? Park Beyond is a theme park simulation game that gives you the freedom to create and manage the park of your dreams. The premise is that you are a visioneer. A creative leader is a combination of a creator, a manager and a designer wrapped up in all one powerful package. Every aspect of developing and maintaining a successful theme park will be under your control. The game boasts a huge array of rides, buildings and terraforming tools. An easy finance manager, a comprehensive roller coaster creator and a campaign and sandbox modes. First up is accessibility. With regards to accessibility, there's a plethora of options to tweak and adapt the way you play this game from input prompts, dynamic cursor, subtitles, UI scaling, and even a variety of color deficiency options. This is a good selection to help those that may normally ha have a chance to play such a game. Next is gameplay. Most people who will be looking at this game will be looking through the lens of nostalgia in terms of the likes of a theme park, and at the very least will have a basic understanding of the genre it created. For me at least, this hits more like Planet Coaster, and is more focused on fun and excitement than the full on nitty gritty of financial management. That said, you'll still need to ensure that your visitors are well looked after and their needs met if you want a good rating. Before you start, you get the choice of campaign mode or sandbox mode. Sandbox is exactly what it says and is a creative free for all mode. There are no boundaries. It allows you to spend as much time as you want creating your park with unlimited resources available. The game's leveling up system is still in place, but making decisions about the venue's target audience, theme, environment location, and general design are all yours to play with. To level up your park, you need to ensure that the main criteria, cleanliness, fun and amazement, are high enough for you to move on to the next level, which in turn unlocks more modules, shops, rides and decorations. This is covered more in detail in the game's campaign mode, which I highly recommend you do. In the campaign mode, you start off waking up in your bedroom and throw one of your scribbled park designs out of the window in the form of a paper aeroplane. This just happens to hit one of the game's main characters who strangely enough has been scouting for new talent. After seeing your idea, she enlists you to create a park in your own hometown to prove your worth. In doing so, you are then met with the management team and asked to join the failing fun park business as their creative lead. In each of the game's eight chapters, you are presented a zone and have to pitch your park to the board of unique directors. When you first start, it's effectively the creative director and his managing accountant. But as you progress, more enter including the health and safety advisor, gadget engineer, and your first encounter, the crazy stunt enthusiast, which all come on board. Each of them bring unique challenges and perks to the table. And it's here you'll be given small choices that will affect the game's chapter's objectives. For example, one choice will insist you maintain a cleanliness rating of 90% and will receive lots of money, where the other will be 80% and an average amount. Once you have agreed to the conditions you wish to play under, you are kicked out of the boardroom and it's time to simply build that park. Thankfully, a laying down a ride is a simple and clicking on the one you want, placing where you want and adding entrance and exits to said ride. The complication is when those very pathways get too close to another due to the game's auto-snap feature, for example near an intersection from the other side. This can be a hindrance rather than a benefit sometimes, and can physically stop you from creating a pathway to your ride. However, with a bit of creativity you can circumvent it, but that can lead to other problems down the line like ride stopping or people not being able to access said ride. Each ride has unique stats which fall into three categories, fun, amazement and profitability. They are also tailored to specific demographics which the park operates on, adults, families and teens. Ensuring the best category for the chosen demographic is paramount to maintaining a profitable and fun business. 
Flat rides are prefab modules which you can click and place, but it's the roller coasters that you can really let your design flair take over. Whilst there still is prefab options, it's making your own unique ones that sells the game's intent. The coaster design system is really flexible and pretty intuitive in what you wish to accomplish. You can twist tracks across any axis or just add the large amount of preset corkscrew, twists and loops and tweak their attributes instead. As you progress the level of your park, you unlock more specialist modules that add crazy elements to the ride, like shooting carriages over an open air, while allowing rides to skip along with the water for a short period. The crazier the ride, the more chances you are allowed to attach a hook to the coaster, which each have two to start off with, with one more to unlock later. They are effectively PR promotions that appeal to specific demographics and can adjust the fun, amazement and profitability stats of your ride. There is a large amount of hooks to choose from and if you meet the hooks conditions you can simply add or amend it whenever you feel. Another great feature is the game test runs your ride and will do so after every change to help ensure that no part fails or will cause harm to the visitors in question. Changing the stats on your flat rides is different and this is where the game's impossifications mechanic takes centre stage. To gain impossifications, you need to ensure your amazement is high as this will gradually generate impossification levels found in the top left hand corner. Hitting a certain level will allow you to upgrade a number of different things. For instance, upgrading your basic ride into something truly crazy will in turn boost the ride's stats and look wild. A simple ferris wheel, for example, gets a second wheel on top that picks up gondolas from below and throws them off again after one revolution. A bumper ride turns from a small, simple pen enclosure into a huge pinball table that bounces the visitors around as if they were the pinballs. All these upgrades to these are truly worth your time and boost your park's overall stats. However, there is a downside as doing so will cause maintenance costs to increase significantly. You can even impossificate shops and your employees who can then sell a new item or do their job better. For instance, impossificate a janitor and he quickly gets a flamethrower to help get rid of that tash even more quickly. There is no such craziness for your roller coaster rides, as this is already taken care of in the general park's levelling system. But it will increase the ride's overall stats and also unlock that third hook, allowing for even more flexibility in what you wish to target. Thankfully, the game prefers a more micromanagement style than others of its genre, which lets you focus on the real task of designing the park and upgrading the rides to their wacky variants. If a ride does break down, the game will shut it down and send a mechanic to fix it for you. That's not saying you can't get technical if you want. You can set each of the food store's individual product prices, take out loans, change the ride's price, staff wages and even hire and fire on the spot. It provides helpful analysis tools and statistics to ensure you can focus at any time on the area that's keeping you away from creating. Besides the game's main criteria, each level has individual goals you have to achieve in order to progress to the next chapter. Goals can be anything from an income limit, customer nausea status, or even simply hiring workers. All of the goals and challenges the board set can be found in the team's goal section for easy access. These are here to teach you the fundamentals of the game, and most of them do exactly that, with the odd one or two needing a bit more figuring out. But overall, the structure of the missions are very successful, with each milestone shown in the corner as a guide to keep you on track. To say this game is fun would be an understatement. It hits that sweet spot of creative freedom and management that some in the genre failed to accomplish. But I should note that during my playtime I did have a few occasions where the game fully crashed and sent me back to the homepage. This happened mostly when I was creating complex pathing, so it may be prudent to avoid that at the moment till the developer drops a patch. Next is graphics. The game's visuals are bright, colourful and invoke a comic style that fits well with the game's wacky theme.
Regarding of themes, you can decorate the park and all of the rides with a vast selection of preset scenarios like Wild West or Space, but also even specifically target elements of the rides to match any style of your choosing. The biggest win here though is a huge amount of free decoration objects and landscaping that really allows you to open up your creative juice. Terraforming is also free and everything can be cheaply raised on massive platforms with paths and bridges all over the place should you so desire. This extends further in the sandbox mode with the 26 different environments to choose from and manipulate to suit your needs, each being a visual feast on the eyes. One of the best choice in UI design I have seen comes in the form of the game's heat map, which uses infrared to spot out the problems with your park depending on the option you are choosing. Need to work out who's the hungry the most, or which rides are not as profitable, well this simple option gives you all of that information with a click of a button. That said, this game screams out for keyboard and mouse support, and I hope they bring that to consoles in the future. All rides can be ridden using the game's in-person camera view, and this is especially fun doing so on your own created roller coaster. But this is also where the game's biggest glitches comes into actions, as doing so pop-ins and screen tearing is commonplace. I think it's just because of the sheer density the game has to process on the fly, and whilst it is noticeable, it really doesn't stop the fun factor. And finally, it's sound. The game is voiced and the voice acts do a superb job portraying the own avatar's weird and wonderful personalities. My clear favourite by far was the company's creative director and poster boy whose ideas and humour ranges from insane ramblings to some thoughtful poetic verbs. This banter with his managing accountant, trying her hardest to keep it in check with hard facts, kept things light and entertaining, and a nice respite from the park's dealings. Curdling curmudgeons! It seems everyone's on the trolley for impossifying except you. Why do you have an onion in your ointment about this, Izzy? With regards to music, the game has chosen a more a background music, which can be best be compared to your traditional elevator music. That's just there more to provide some noise, but nothing much more. This is mostly because at any time you can zoom in on a ride and enjoy its own music, which you can set from a variety of options. Sounds of the park, customers and the general ride's own selection of tracks are all punchy when in range and do sell that busy theme park aesthetic. My recommendation here is a good quality headset to hear the screams of your visitors as they dive, swing and thrall at your very creations. And this leads me onto the rating of the game. Now I rate games in order of avoid, on sale, great purchase and must own. My rating for Park Beyond is a great purchase. The game isn't statistically heavy and has the tools to keep the management part frustration free for a more relaxing fun experience overall. If you were looking for an entrance into theme park genre, this could very well be the one for you, with its over the top wacky approach to all things a roller coaster and easy going gameplay when wanted. The game is currently priced on Xbox at £49.99, or approximately $50, and depending on your skill and patience would give you around 50 plus hours worth of gameplay. Combine that with the game's sandbox mode and its variety of different options to tweak and manipulate the roller coasters, the layouts, the environments and everything else, you could easily double that time. This is a really fun game, and you'll easily lose hours of your time creating, manipulating and changing every aspect should you wish, and if not, still enjoy what the game has to offer. Is there some bugs? 
yes, but nothing will hinder your enjoyment for hours on end, and that can be easily ironed out later with some patches. Overall, this is a nice, accessible, stress-free park building experience that is out to keep you smiling, and it does that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. I do hope you like this review, and if you do, please like, share, and subscribe if you so wish. And if you would like to put some notes or even just a comment in the comment section, I do like reading them. Anyway, have a great time gaming, and I'll see you all again soon.